What's up everybody, this is BR, and today I want to talk about map design, specifically map design with Call of Duty. As you've probably heard, Modern Warfare 2 2022 has been teased by Activision, and with that teaser comes the multitude of leaks. And one of those leaks is that the new Modern Warfare 2 is going to include a lot of classic maps from the old days of Call of Duty. Which, to be honest, is a little disappointing. For something that's definitely going to be a $60 game, you would expect everything to be brand new rather than just rehashed stuff. But at the same time, you really don't want bad quality maps, so it also kind of makes sense why they're bringing it back. Especially since fans really do appreciate these maps and are willing to pay $60 just to get a rehash rather than get terrible maps. Now that really got me thinking about the map design of Call of Duty and why these older maps are just so much more preferred. Unfortunately, I never really had the chance to play Modern Warfare 2 back when it released in 2009. So as far as map design goes for that particular game, I have no real clue about it. Now, what I did play a majority of back in the day was Call of Duty World at War. And I think it's safe to say that World at War does share a little bit of map design concepts with Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. After all, World at War's multiplayer is pretty much just a copy of Modern Warfare's multiplayer. So it would make sense that their maps are pretty similar. Another Call of Duty that I spent hours on was Black Ops 3 in 2015. And luckily for me, this was around the time that the map design was really criticized. This is where the three lane map style of Call of Duty really started to show, where every single map in the game was pretty much just three lanes. While Black Ops 3 generally had better map design compared to World War II and Infinite Warfare, you could still feel the staleness of the three lane maps that were just abundant. This stigma would definitely continue until Modern Warfare 2019, which changed the philosophy just a little bit. But I think it'll be a good idea to compare World at War's map design compared to Black Ops 3's to really show what made World at War's maps just so much better. Now after walking around World at War's maps and remembering how they played, I think I have a pretty good idea of what made them so good. Now the two components that really makes these maps stand out are the map flow, and what I like to call the control point map style. Unlike the maps in Black Ops 3, which had the three lanes where you had to go down to, a lot of the maps in World at War, like Castle and Airfield, motivate you to move around the map in a circular motion, always having the option to cut through the middle in case you really wanted to get into some firefights. But most of the time, these middle areas really would be high risk as you'd be stuck out there in the open. This kind of map design would actually motivate a lot of people to start moving around the map more often, especially since these outer areas were a lot safer compared to going down the middle. And if you stayed in one place, well, you either caught somebody off guard or they caught you. This map design did make things a lot more dynamic compared to three lane maps that we have in Black Ops 3, as you could pretty much have a fight anywhere rather than just the middle of the map where the three lanes meet. While all these maps pretty much were made with Team Deathmatch in mind, there was something about it that really made it more focused, and that is what I like to call the control point map style. For example, in a map like Hangar, there's this area where you can take control of that you can strongly defend and it's pretty easy to defend as well. You have a lot of sight lines and it's a pretty good power position and because of that a lot of the fighting really did just focus on that area. Even though there wasn't actually an objective in Team Deathmatch, a lot of the times the fighting would pretty much just be king of the hill at that point. The same thing happens in Castle where you have these two spots that are just fantastic for a sniper. And because of that a lot of the fighting is literally just trying to take control of that castle because if you don't, your team is just gonna lose a lot of points so it's very important to try to capture those positions. Now combine that with the map flow and now you have some pretty consistent gameplay. And now the middle area becomes flank routes, while the outside of the maps are for positioning. And sometimes you would bump into other people in the middle area of the map. Now compare this to Black Ops 3. Most if not all the power positions really aren't that good, and you really don't have an incentive to push or defend an area. And this definitely makes a lot of sense since Black Ops 3 wanted to be a lot more mobile. However, it causes this kind of stale gameplay where you just pretty much choose three lanes to go down to rather than having an objective in mind. At that point, you're pretty much just playing RNG, hoping that you see the enemy before they see you. And it really just removes the team part of the team deathmatch. And I always wish that maps like Castle would appear in Black Ops 3 DLC packs, but that day never did come. Now they did end up adding outskirts, but that map was just too big for Black Ops 3. Now that's not to say that World at War didn't have its fair share of three lane maps. Maps like Cliffside and Upheaval did show this kind of three lane philosophy before, but it wasn't the majority. 
but I will say that some three lane maps really did become super popular. The two most notable maps that I can think of are Raid and Nuketown. And those two maps became some of the most staple maps in Call of Duty history, especially when compared to Castle and Courtyard. I personally don't know if either one is objectively better. In fact, maybe the best route to take is just to have a combination of the two. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Personally, I do like the old maps a lot better. Like this video if you like it, dislike it if you dislike it. If you'd like to see more content like this one, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.